Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Boston Rush. It's a game by Tectonic Games, which involves busting and rushing. Surprise, surprise. If anyone thought this was going to be some kind of farm simulator, I feel you will be disappointed. So what's it all about? Well, it's about running, basically. So let's get right into it and just show you exactly what's going on. It's a Unity engine game, which means this really doesn't really make a lot of difference. I mean, you have the, the very, very much the standard presets that every Unity engine game seems to have. And you also have a launcher, which allows you to change your resolution. But that is pretty much it. You can have a look at the controls if you like. The controls are fairly simple, as you can see. Up, down, left, right, forward, change camera. And you can also, if you so desire, use the arrow keys. That really is all there is to it. So, let's check it out, shall we? Before I start, by the way, we should probably look at achievements and tell you that calling them Chivos is absolutely unacceptable. That there is no reasonable reason to call it Chivos. Chivos sounds like a corn snack. This is not a corn snack. Alright, so what have we got? I played the first couple of tutorial levels, as always, to make sure that you guys didn't have to deal with it. It appears that one of them is in space. That's certainly a good start. And for what I can understand, the game doesn't really seem to have much of a plot to it. All there seems to be is this pink flamingo that the guy in question is very, very upset about losing because a bunch of rocks fell on it. And he seems to be trying to go and rescue it, but yeah, that really is about it. Alright, so, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I am currently using two buttons. It's not exactly what I'd call difficult. There are, of course... Whoa, okay. Apparently, I landed on the red rock. I don't... Really? Did I land on that red rock? I'm pretty sure I made it over that red rock. Oh, well, never mind. Right, so, I'm using two buttons at the moment, which is W and space. Space is jump, W is rush. If you rush... Then you gain combo, as you can see right there. You need to rush in order to break through the blue rocks. You must avoid the red rocks under all circumstances. Otherwise, you instantly lose. Uh, you can... What the... Right, I guess I slowed down too much. Okay. That's kind of irritating. I'm not sure if there's a indicator as to whether or not I am rushing or not. Let, let me just stop for a second. Let's see if... No, I'm, I'm still rushing. Okay. I'm not sure. It's like sometimes it seems like, okay, yeah, this is the right speed. Perhaps it's that little bar at the top, but I don't know what's the appropriate speed and what is not. The game doesn't seem to give you a lot of feedback in that respect. I thought I was rushing, but apparently, no, I was not rushing. And as, as such, I tripped over the rock and died instantly and had to start the level again. All right. We can... I think we're going to miss those by the looks of it like to get the end of the level so I can show you some of the more advanced mechanics because right now I'm not moving left or right which does somewhat limit what you have to do in this game as you can tell that's all right because I'm playing air guitar solos right I got a rank what does that get me I guess it just unlocks the next level or something I don't know it doesn't tell me it's a... all right jump over five pits all right then I'm jumping over five pits folks now, you can also collect these score orbs, which give you score multipliers. Aside from that, I'm not really paying much attention to what's going on in the game. I have to imagine that later on, this game gets rather hectic, but there isn't really a lot to it in the early stages. This, I, I'm actually kind of surprised that this isn't the mobile game. Having seen that it was a Unity Engine title, I thought, oh, you know, this must be a port over from an iOS device or something like that. And if I can tell it's not... Alright, S or shift to break. Right, okay. I guess we're busting stalactites in the process. Or trying to do just that. Anyway, I thought it was a mobile game, but I'm not seeing any evidence of that. I saw the poster Rock Paper Shotgun. I looked for it, I didn't see an iOS store entry for it. And now I've just tripped over the rock and died, so we get to play the level again. That's exciting stuff. And as a result, it, it does seem awfully simplistic. I mean, one might say that there was a certain elegance to the simplicity, but there really isn't. I mean, I don't see any kind of visceral enjoyment that you get from smashing through these rocks. It, maybe if the impacts were better, perhaps, or maybe if you had more of a sensation of speed. and that, That's not there either. I mean, the, the game is... Ugh, crying out loud. The game is hard-capped to 30 FPS, for what I can tell. I did check. 
And as a result, you don't exactly get much of a feeling of momentum going. There's definitely not a lot of smoothness in this game. It's fairly jerky. It's just a case of, well, this is a kind of a little casual game, isn't it? That you'd play every now and again. But on a PC, would I really play this title when there are other games I could be playing? Especially for the price. And it's not an expensive game. It's an $8 title, but... Considering the Steam sales that are going on at the moment, the fact that you can get Terraria for like two bucks fifty, it's like this or Terraria. Hmm. I never really like to make that comparison a huge amount in my. I almost said reviews, and that's not true. They're not reviews at all. They don't follow the requirements. They do not fit into that. But I keep saying this in my first impressions videos, and I try I try to avoid it if at all possible. Because I don't... Alright, cool. Now I get to sidestep. Right, so the complexity comes in here, I guess. Well, not really. I try to avoid saying, well, you could buy this. Because I don't think that's a particularly valid argument at any point. I think every game should kind of be judged on its own merits where possible. And say, oh, well, you could just buy this. Like, me saying, why buy a full price $60 release when you could buy Heroes of Might and Magic 3? Which would probably give you more enjoyment. That's not a valid point. It's not a valid comparison, but when a game seems to lack an awful lot in terms of substance, it's very hard not to come up with that argument. But I'd say discount what I said in that kind of sense and look at what the game offers, which is not a huge amount. I mean, from what I can tell, there's quite a lot of levels. All of these appear to be in a cave, and then there's one that looks like it's in a factory, and then there's one that looks like it's in space. And there are various obstacles which you have to knock down. Funnily enough, this reminds me of a game that was on a Saturday... God damn it. Saturday morning kids TV show. And I don't even actually remember. It may be... Was his name Henry or something like that? It was this troll, right? Okay, apparently you can't strike fast enough to avoid that useful information it was this troll it may have been henry the troll or something like that and these kids used to phone in and they would give directions to the troll in order to avoid obstacles and i think it, there was various versions of this thing and one of them is on a minecart and you were dodging left and right and things like that this is how this game actually feels and it's, it's not really a compliment and try and analyze the rest of the game and say like, you know what does it have going for it. I mean, the soundtrack is pretty good to the point where they've actually put together a soundtrack edition for an extra dollar that you can buy. It's not exceptional, but it's pretty okay. And I think the soundtrack is probably the, the strongest part of it. There, there are some nice bits of presentation. The fact that it's very much a cel-shaded style game and it, it kind of looks Borderlands-ish with the big black outlines, a little bit Jet Set Radio in there as well, but it it's inconsistent. Uh, the character, for instance, versus those big red rocks. Those red rocks are ugly as sin. And outlined in big red, that it doesn't really fit the aesthetic, in my honest opinion. I'm not really sure what kind of aesthetic they were really looking for here. What kind of aesthetic do you go for when your game consists primarily of rocks? I have no idea. I am not a games designer, and I don't have a lot of experience with games that have a lot of rocks in them. With the exception of, say, Terraria, for instance. But I just... There isn't really a lot to it. This is the kind of thing, as I said, that would be good on a mobile device for quick five to ten minute sessions. On a PC, there are so many better experiences available that it's really hard to give a recommendation for something like this. It, it does what it does pretty well, but what it does is really simple. Incredibly simple. It's This is a one-handed game. You can play this game with one hand. There is no reason for you not to, in fact. It doesn't benefit you in any respect. It's a 90 second survival, so this is even more difficult. It, it, it's, it is getting to be quite a challenging game. But it doesn't interest. The challenge doesn't interest me. It doesn't grab me in any respect. I'm busting rocks. And what I'd like to see are perhaps a, a bit more feedback, maybe some more visual feedback. It's like, hey, you're busting rocks. Maybe there's light shows going off and nonsense like that. And all there really is is that multiply in the side of the screen, which I don't really want to look at because I'm too busy focused on the middle of the screen to try to avoid the sodding rocks that are coming at me at 90 miles an hour. There's just so little to it. 
There is an endless mode as well and a bunch of challenges that you can supposedly unlock, but that would involve you actually enjoying the core gameplay to begin with. And I don't, because the core gameplay is very, very shallow. There's very little going on. I think it's almost the same problem I have with Data Jammers, actually. Data Jammers was a fairly similar game, only it was sort of in a Tron-style environment. Like, ooh, you are, you are racing past these obstacles and smashing this stuff and getting score and nonsense like that. And All credit to this game. It's getting a significant amount of momentum right now, and it doesn't make me feel sick like Data Jammers did, but there's not much to it, is there? There really, really is not. Make it a mobile game. Make it like, say, $2 or whatever. It's even if there was some kind of progression beyond this ranking system, I would like it. Uh, there's nothing there. Can I, you know, the ability to buy upgrades, for instance, and actually customize my character a bit. I've unlocked this second area, one of three, and you can see there's 30 levels available. So I suppose we can try something on here, and it looks like you can... Ah, I see, okay. So there's portals and they add more and more game mechanics going in it almost reminds me in terms of the progression and things like that of angry birds i mean angry birds very much had that gameplay where it gradually introduced you to different mechanics and things like that and it even had the, the challenges in a board and the levels in a board like this game does but ah cripe cripe that's a new word there we go we're avoiding even minus word words now on the show we're sanitizing it for everybody it's just not got anything going for it, though, really. It, it doesn't have the pick-up-and-play, just-one-more-level gameplay that I want from something really casual like this. I like the fact that it is introducing more and more mechanics as we go through. That's, that's cool, but... Just the core aspect of it isn't up to snuff. And that's the real problem with it. Would I really want to play an endless mode? Probably not. We can try it out anyway, just to make sure that there's something going for it here. I don't think there is. It's a shame, really, isn't it? When a company comes up with a concept they think is good, it's like, oh, you know, this this is a... El Christ. <laughs> this is an elegant concept. It's like, well, yeah, but I think PC gamers expect a little bit more. I think even console gamers would. The, si the sheer simplicity of what this offers is something that I feel only... God, that's irritating. <laughs> that I feel only a mobile gamer would really appreciate in very short bursts. Like, make this a 69 cent game on iOS, and chances are you're going to sell quite a few copies. $7 game, or indeed $8 game on PC? No. No. Far too shallow, way too little to it. I find myself hard-pressed to care. So, yes, but that's Bust and Rush, ladies and gentlemen. It's not exactly the pinnacle of gaming development, I'm afraid. My name's been Total Biscuit, having a look at this particular title. And I will see you next time.